Hi, it's Rob from The Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Black Templar's Primaris Neophyte. If you'd like to support the channel, our Coffee and Patreon page is a link below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to paint this onto his face and his arms as well. I really like these Neophyte figures, they're basically just larger scouts. I'll put up a size comparison picture if anyone wants to see one of those on Instagram. But their armor is pretty much the same as the old scout's armor. Just a few differences to make them more in line with the Prime Aris, but they are really, really nice miniatures. Next up, we're going to use some Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to do his pouches and belt. Also, going to use this to do his boots and his gloves. If you're looking at the pictures, the gloves and the boots look a very, very, very dark brown. We're going to achieve that dark brown with two layers of wildwood contrast on top of the Bane Blade Brown. It's a really, really easy way of doing it, and then you can just do like a couple of highlights on that. But if you do that wildwood over the Bane Blade Brown, it does give you that nice deep brown with the second coat. It gives you that kind of leathery shine. This here is Citadel Rackarth Flesh. I'm going to paint the tabard with this. You've got the little bit that comes down almost like a loincloth at the front there. Then you've also got a little bit that comes down from underneath the chest plate. You can see a little bit of it between the legs there, but not too much that I'm going to worry about painting that off too well. Once you've got that on there, you want to make sure that's a nice smooth coat. Then we can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to use some Citadel Mephist on red. Use this to do the casings of the weapons. So on the chainsword and the bolt pistol there. I'm doing the handle of the sword here in Mephist on red. We're going to be painting that up with corn red a little bit later on, and that's just to save a section of paint in there. Because it won't make that much difference once we've shaded it. So next up we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to use this to do the Aquila on his chest, and also the skull at the end of his chainsword. Like so. Next up we're going to use some Citadel Iron Hand Steel. We're going to use this to do all the silvery metallic parts. So you've got the teeth on the chainsaw, the sort of engine section to it. The main parts of the bolt pistol. And also his belt buckle. Picked up one of the Black Templars, sets the paint up for the channel. So there's likely to be quite a few Black Templars videos coming soon. I'm now I'm going to use some Vallejo White to paint up the shoulder pads. I'm going to try and get this as smooth as possible, so white usually is a bit streaky, and if you've sprayed the miniature black like I have, then you will find that you have to put a couple of layers on there, but that's not too much of an issue. Just paint one on, leave it to dry, then repaint it again once it's completely dry and you should have a pretty decent coat. If you try and paint over it when it's not fully dry you'll end up with some nice streaks. But leaving that to dry you can get rid of them too. Now we're going to use some Thondia Brown from Citadel and this is just to do his hair. Like so. Now using Citadel Apothecary White to paint up those shoulders. When you post up some pictures of this one on the Patreon last night. John commenting that he had a similar haircut when he was younger. 
it made me laugh because I also had an incredibly similar haircut to this guy when I was younger. So yay for the 90s. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Contrast Wildwood. We're going to use this to paint up his gloves and also his boots. Now there is sections of armour on his boots, I'm not too concerned about getting the Wildwood over those because when we come to repaint the black a little bit later on just to make sure we haven't gone over that, we'll repaint those armour sections then. So it doesn't matter if you let the Wildwood go over there or you've painted Bane Blade Brown over those armour pieces on the boots of the gloves. So we will be touching them up later. Now it's time for a little bit of snake bite leather contrast from Citadel. This to paint the belt and also the pouches which are going around his waist. The headphone cable is just being attacked by a kitten at the moment. If you've not used the contrast paint, I expect most people have now, but if you haven't used them, there is some good ones to pick up. You'll see on this the differences in just using those contrasts over a certain colour. We're now going to put that second coat of Wildwood onto the boots and the gloves. You can see the difference in shade of brown compared to the initial coat, and also compared to where we've put the snake bite leather on the belt and the pouches. They are very, very handy paints indeed. Contrasts, I'm very impressed with them. Next colour we're going to use is Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this to shade the gold. So you've got that Aquila on the chest and the skull at the end of the chainsword, like the pommel. Next there's going to be a little bit of Citadel Drucci Violet and this is going to be used to do the red so you've got the casing of the bolt pistol and also the casing of the chainsaw too. If you wanted to, you could probably could use Carabair Crimson if you didn't want as dark a shading on these weapons. I'm going to use a little bit of Reichland Flesh Shade on his face and arms. Now some Nuln Oil on the Silvery Metallics, the bits we use the Iron Hand Steel on. Once you've painted all these shades on, I think it really does give a good impression of where all the details are on the miniature. So it makes them all stand out really nicely. So when you're bringing those colours back out with the highlights and the base colours, you really can get some nice effects when using the shades. Now we're going to use some Citadel Seraphim Sepia, this just to do the tabard at the front there. When we build this up we'll be making it so that it's less pure white and more of a creamy colour. Now we're going to go back to the Mephist on red. We're going to start adding colours to the casing on the chainsword and the bolt pistol. So when you're reapplying this, you want to leave the shade in the recesses. Mainly apply the colour back to the areas that will be getting a lot more light than the rest. Now because the side of this chainsword is actually quite wide, what I'm doing is I'm painting about two-thirds of the way down it. With my fist on red, leaving some of the shade there 
and then doing a little thin edge of my fist on red at the bottom there so you've got a little bit of that shade in the middle we'll tweak that up so it looks less bold a little bit later I'm going to use some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet I'm going to do about 50% of the area that we did on the fist on red there Finally, we're going to use some Citadel Wild Rider Red. We are going to highlight the bolt pistol and the chainsaw with this. So we think about where the light's coming from. Highlight those top edges and some of the side edges just to give it that nice standout look. The thing is currently looking like I'm a heavy smoker. I'm not. I just had a bit of an incident with the snake bite leather pot. Where I shook the snake by leather pot and the lid wasn't on properly and it just went absolutely everywhere and covered my hands. I'm going to work on his face using Cadian Flesh Tone. Also using this on his arms. So you want to be picking out the details on the arms and the face. And doing some light striations on the muscles as well. To show which way they go. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to use a smaller brush. I'm using the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush here. We're picking out all those details, adding some thinner striations and highlighting about 50% of the area that we used for the Cadian Flesh Tone. Like so. Next we're going to add some more white to the previous mix. We're going to do a final layer of highlights on that skin. I'm going to use a little spot of white to do his eyes. So using a really fine brush here, I'm trying out the insane detail brush from Army Painter, which I got years and years ago, never really used. So I'm going to quick try this one. It's actually a really decent tip to it, so I'll be using that a little bit later to paint the Crusade badge on his hip. And I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black to put the spot in his eye. I'm going to use a tiny little spot of Caro Bird Crimson just to colour his lips and just put a little tiny bit around his eyes that will shade it and give it that slightly darker pallor to the rest of the skin. I'm also going to use this to go around all of these little sockets and nodules on his arm. Don't forget the back of his head too. Next we're going to use some Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to use this to paint the little raised sections on the grip of his chainsaw. Can't really see too much on this one. Just add a little bit to that. We're then going to highlight this with Citadel Wasdaka Red. So you're covering about half the area again mainly at the top of the grip. 
finally use a tiny little bit of pink horror just to put a little highlight on the edge of each section I've chosen the top edge because the light will be catching that more than the bottom edge do that around say the top three quarters of each one I'm going to start working on the gold using Citadel Retribute Armour slightly off camera to begin with there basically I'll paint each section again using Retribute Armour using the Wargamer character brush here so that I can get each section without too much worry about spreading it onto the next like so next we're going to be using Citadel Liberator Gold this is to highlight the Retributor Armour so what I tend to do is on the pommel here you'll do the areas that are going to be catching the most light and then with the wings I'll always do the very tips of each of the little feathery bits and the very tips of the wing section that goes around the feathery bits at the top and also the little curved bits by the skull and then highlight the skull as you usually would Now I'm going to mix a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold. We're just going to do some extreme highlights like edge highlights in the areas that will be catching the most light. Now on, on these feathery sections you're going to be doing the very very tips of them. And also highlighting the sections of skull that will be catching the most light. So a little bit of the dome at the top and then the bottom of each eye socket any little ridges and that kind of thing. Now we'll briefly back onto the metallic, so we're going to use the iron hand steel again. I'm just going to lightly go over these to give them a bit more shine so that you've got the shade and the recesses and the shine on each of the sections. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate because it's going to be a little bit gritty a little bit grimy maybe I'm going to try and leave a few bits of that shade in place next up Citadel Balor Brown I'm going to use this to highlight the belt and the pouches so going along the horizontal edges of the top and the bottom of the belt you want to be doing vertical strokes to give that a rough scuffed look and the same on the pouches too any vertical edges you want to be doing horizontal strokes and any horizontal edges you want to be doing vertical strokes just so that you can make sure it gives that rough edge you're not just got a straight area because that won't give it that same scuffed look next up Citadel Rackarth Flesh mixed with a little bit of Balor Brown to lighten it up now we're just going to do another highlight on the leather sections once more I'm finally going to add a little bit more Rakarth Flesh to the previous mix just to give it that one final light highlight. Carrying on doing the same method of brush strokes but getting smaller and smaller just so it maintains that rough edges to each of the scuffs. like so. Now we're going to go for pure Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to start reapplying the colour to the tabard. So you want to leave the Seraphim Sepia in the recesses. And use the Rakarth Flesh to get all of those big crests and wide areas where you'll be catching more light. He's also got a bit of a kink in the tabard where it goes over his knee so you're going to put more of a car flesh above the knee than below. 
or more highlights above the knee than below I should say. Now I'm going to add some white to the Ricard flesh. We're just going to start highlighting the tabard. I'm going to be doing about 50% of the area you've just covered. It's here that you start adding the highlights to the areas that you think get more light, so above the knee rather than below the knee. Just adding a few little smaller highlights below the knee level there where the tabard bends underneath them. So that section is going to be naturally darker. That's what you're trying to go for when you paint the highlights further up. Adding more white to the previous mix. I'm going to do that once again and give it more highlights. The final highlight, we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just bring that tabard up to a nice light colour on the edges of the crests and this kind of section above the knee here. I'm going to use pure Vallejo white. This is going to be to do the shoulder pads. So where we've shaded these shoulder pads, you want to leave the apothecary white in a thin layer around the edges of the Black Templars badge on the shoulder there. But only doing the sections which will be catching the most light. So you're probably doing about the top half of this pauldron. And you can leave the sections underneath where it has the apothecary white shade as it wouldn't be getting that much light. Now we're going to start reapplying the black. So you can do this on the crosses on the shoulders, also his armour and his trousers. And you can actually go onto the armour plates on the boots now as well if you want to. This is where you start putting the colour black onto all of the black to make sure we haven't got any of those other colours on it. Now we're going to use Vallejo German Grey. We're just working on the armour here. So you want to use this on the armour plate, paint it on the areas that will be getting the most light. So you don't want to be doing it on the underside of anything really. You want to be catching the edges and areas that will be getting, as I say, the most light. I'm going to use Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're just going to do some edge highlights, mainly on the top edges of everything. It's just to make those stand out. So you've got like the knee pads, you've got the little bolts on the knee pads. The armour plates on the boots. And the carapace armour on his torso. That kind of thing. Plenty of details on the back of that carapace armour as well. So you can get some nice top highlights on there. Make them all stand out. Now we're going to be working on the hair, so we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown. Using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. Again, just to pick out all those individual strands and raised areas. So you've still got the shade in the recesses. It was actually the Nolan Oil shade that was used on his hair. Didn't mention that earlier, unfortunately. So if you haven't shaded it, just lash a little bit of Nuln oil on his hair. You can also use this to highlight the boots and the gloves. 
Now we're going to mix a little bit of Citadel Barrow Brown with the Thondia Brown, just to create that highlight colour and just highlight the hair a little bit. I'm also going to use this to highlight the boots and the gloves, just to bring out the details on those. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black, mix in a little bit of Thondia Brown, so we've got a very, very, very dark brown. I'm just going to use this to highlight the pants. Now I want the pants to look as black as they can be, but also want to have a slight highlight in there, so a slightly difference in colour. I didn't want to use the same colours and shades as I used on the arm plates. So we've added a little bit of Thondia Brown to the black, just to give it that ever so slight brown tinge. And we're just going to use that on the trousers and also he's got like a kind of t-shirt sleeves you can use a little bit of this around the neck if you haven't used the armor plate colors on that too now i'm going to use a little bit of white to start off on the crusade icon on the hip here and i'll be skipping to a few other colors now i'm going to be doing this as a separate tutorial so i'm only going to show you the initial part of painting on this white section here because it takes a little bit longer and we'll push the length of this tutorial over. But basically all the little shields and stuff like that will be getting this design. I'll do a full start to finish tutorial on that in a week or so. So that is the finished Black Templar's Primaris Neophyte. Really pleased with how he turned out. It's nice to see the scouts making a return because that's basically what they look like to me. But really, really nice miniature, really fun to paint. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.